Hi guys, this is the Grizzled Grunt here. Uh, this is my first episode, so I just want to introduce myself and then we're going to go into our topic. So I've uh, spent most of my life outdoors when I was younger and then military 20 plus years. Nothing fancy, just an infantryman, but uh, I have a lot of skills that I think I'd like to share with people. Not necessarily to teach people new things, but maybe things they haven't learned yet um, in a different way. So without further ado, we're going to look into uh, choosing a bag to get home to keep in your truck. I know it's been gone over by everyone on the internet, but I figure I'd put my twist to it because there's some things that I see people talk about that I feel they leave stuff out or I think they could have added some stuff, maybe be more clear on it. So uh, get home bag to keep in your car. All right, there's a couple ways to do this and there's a couple things to help determine what you're gonna need. Biggest thing is distance to where you're going. So I live five minutes by driving, so like two miles to work. So I don't need anything huge to get home. And these get home bags are not meant to, for you to survive forever on. They're just meant to get you from point A to point B. So 24, maybe 48 hours tops, depending on how far you live from where you're gonna be at, or if maybe your car breaks down and you're in town somewhere. So that's a big determining factor is how far it's going to be. I don't think it's only a 20 minute drive because a 20 minute drive could equate to 10 to 15 miles. And if you don't walk 10 to 15 miles very often, that could be a one to two day ordeal. And also it depends on how much crap you plan on carrying with you. Um, choosing the bag for the task. Like I said, um, you don't need anything huge. Um, the bigger the bag, the more eyes you're going to draw and uh, the more crap you're going to carry. So, um, and then blend again, people think camouflage is only just like what hunters wear and what military wears. Um, camouflage is blend in both urban and, you know, in the woods, but you're going to be more than likely if you're trying to get home, most of us work in town, you're going to be using an urban type bag to get home. So a couple options, I use something like this, a little lumbar pack, not very big, has enough pouches, enough stuff. Um, but I could just throw in the back of my truck or in the trunk of your car. Um, something this color too. People are going to look in your car and not think anything about it. It's going to blend in better than if you have a, a camouflage. camouflage assault, <coughs> assault pack. So think about that. Blending in to your environment. Okay. Something else to think about. A gym bag. All right. You might look like a tweaker walking down the street, but you're gonna blend in a lot better and people are gonna mess with you a lot less than if you have some big fancy backpack. And it can hold just as much as one of those. It may not be comfortable for hauling for long periods of time, but it should only be 24 hours, maybe 48 max, depending on where you're at. And if you think you're gonna be further than that, maybe this isn't a bag for you, but this is an option. Or just a standard medium sized computer bag, laptop bag. Have enough pouches, but it's not going to scream that you're uh, hauling anything super valuable. It just looks like an everyday backpack. You can get those anywhere. Okay, so moving on. I just uh, something else. Just remember that, like I said before, this isn't like the end of the world bag. This is just to get you home to where the rest of your stuff is. So this is like, like a pistol is meant to get you to your rifle or get you back into the fight. This go bag is to get you rear end home safely. Okay, so now we're gonna go with some of the things that I recommend you carry. Um, when I was in Boy Scouts years ago, they always harped on the 10 essentials you should always have in your bag, no matter if you're going out for a day hike, overnight, or a week. Okay, so the 10 essentials we always carry is a knife, right? Doesn't have to be some big Rambo knife, a pocket knife. Um, Nowadays, multi-tools, something cheap, has a set of pliers, has all kinds of stuff on your can opener, little knife, uh, screwdrivers. So it's whatever you want to carry, something simple like that. Nut doesn't weigh a lot. You don't need a big Rambo knife. You're not running around dispatching bad guys, hopefully. So a first aid kit, all right. First aid kits, you can get small ones like this from like your REI, your Academy Sports. Uh, this is a good, they call this one a weekend kit for three people. 
for two days. This is something I keep in my truck anyway. Or you can make up your own something simple that I keep in my hunting bag. Just a couple of band-aids, some Neosporin, and that's that's for little stuff. Hopefully, you don't need anything more than that. If you're that worried about it, maybe throw a tourniquet in for good measure and a, a few larger pads. The things about stuff like this is they have a few gauzes you can throw in there and you can always add to. Maybe put it in a, in a, a Ziploc bag or a, uh, a waterproof bigger bag to put it in there to keep it dry. Right, moving on, the third thing is extra clothing. Um, some people they don't that I I've seen they don't talk about extra clothing as 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 much. And I, I think what people forget about is a lot of people work in offices. You don't want to be walking five, ten miles in high heel shoes or penny loafers or whatever nerd wear you guys wear. Or, or walking in a three-piece suit or a nice suit because you're going to stand out like a sore thumb in public. You know, extra clothing could be to keep in your car to get home. A pair of blue jeans, a pair of shorts. I recommend pants, especially if you have to go in the woods or anything like that. But they're more durable. They protect you not only from brush, but the sun if it's very hot outside in the summer. I live in the southeast, so uh, take those environmental variations into account too. So uh, change of clothes, maybe a pair of extra socks if, it's, if you know you're going to be going further distances. And then extra layers in the winter. You don't need to be one big puffy jacket. You need to have a couple layers in the winter time. So as you get warm, you can take that stuff off. So if you have to stop, you have something warm to put back on. I'm not going to get in that too much. That's, that's another one. A uh, rain gear. Um, always carry, carry rain gear. A small poncho. I don't have mine with me. I think it's in my, my big ruck, my camp and stuff. Um, Poncho is great because it can keep you dry. You can use it as a shelter. You can use it as a bag to carry stuff or as a litter. If you're by yourself, you shouldn't need a litter theoretically. Um, rain jackets are great and that can also be part of your extra clothing. Um, so I would, like I said, stuff like that. If you think you're going to be moving in an urban environment, you know, those extra clothing shouldn't have to be actual camo should blend you in with the urban environment blue jeans a t-shirt sweatshirt um a civilian color rain jacket so all right fourth thing number four i'm sorry number five is a water source okay don't just bring a bottle of water i recommend at least two quarts of water and that could be in a camelback i like nalgene bottles um they're durable i've had these forever you can measure out of them um, they're wide mouth, so put ice in them. I got the different cap um, on there just so I don't drown, so I can drink while I'm walking without drowning myself because they're so wide mouth. Uh, and something else to go with that a life straw. I have a life straw that I keep in my hunting gear. I didn't bring it out, but those are, are good. But if you're moving to an urban environment, nine times out of ten, it should be water, you know, go to a gas station. Hey, can I get some water? Um, something like that if you have to walk. Most people are willing to help you out, depending on the situation, of course. But it would be nice to have a life straw in case, you know, shit hits the fan, whatever. Your your vehicle gets stuck on the side of the road. You don't have reception. You have to walk back. It may not be one of those urban environments. It may you just be you footing it back. Okay. Moving on to number five. Flashlight or a light source. Don't rely on your cell phone for a flashlight. It burns up batteries, and if you have to make a call and your phone's dead, because you've been doing dumb stuff with your phone, like using your flashlight, have a dedicated flashlight. Um, a handheld one, I prefer a headlamp. All right, this one works off two AAA batteries. has two settings, high, low, and a red and white light. And then keep a set of extra batteries. I keep a set of extra batteries, and I take a piece of electrical tape, and I tape it together so I know that those batteries have not been used yet. And that's because sometimes, like with my hunting stuff, so I don't just throw the batteries in the woods and litter. I put them, just throw them in my bag. If they're loose, I know they've already been used or almost dead. But if they're taped together, I know that they haven't been used yet. So they're still good. Um, check your batteries so often. And then if for some reason this light doubles as your hunting light, check to make sure it doesn't get wet and the connectors are good. Get you a toothbrush or a uh, pencil eraser and rub off the contacts. Make sure it doesn't get any corrosion on there. Okay, number five, food. So some people say MREs, you know, it, 
for something like this where you're moving to a destination, uh, trying to get there as quickly as possible, think of foods that you can eat while you're walking or something that's quick. Uh, granola bars, uh, the gel packs, hand, just handheld foods. Uh, tuna packets are great. Keep you a, a set of uh, plastic flatware from a grocery store or a, um, a convenience store or something like that. They give you the fork, knife, spoon. Just throw that in there because it's disposable. If you lose it, you lose it. Um, but just simple stuff like that to eat the run that's high high on calories because you might need to walk in long distances to replenish that. Um, and have enough for 24 hours, you know. Six, eight, ten granola bars that go a long way. Um, whatever you think you might need. And with anything, when you go through this list, pack it up and walk that distance with it and see if that's going to be the amount of food you think you might need. All right. Moving on to number eight, a fire source. Always carry a fire source. A lighter, <coughs> waterproof matches. Um, you can even make take household matches and dip them in a clear fingernail polish and make them waterproof, just the head of it, not the whole thing. Um, something else you can do with a lighter, take you some duct tape and cut it to the width, and wrap it around it so you have something sticky, or you can wrap it on a on a, uh, a glue stick for a hot glue gun. So for some reason, your shoe or whatever that you, you know, starts losing the sole because you didn't notice it. And that's something else to change the clothes. I already talked about making sure you have comfortable shoes uh, to change into if you wear office type clothing. You don't want to be walking forever in that, that distance. Something else to think about if you're not just a fire starter, but a fire starting source. So, um, cotton balls rolled in Vaseline, put in like a empty pill bottle, keeps it waterproof and those cotton balls will burn. I, for, I think five minutes a piece. Vaseline burns just petroleum jelly. If you don't want to use cotton balls, go to your dryer, get you some lint. This works great and works the same way. Wet it with some Vaseline or pack it in one of those empty pill bottles to keep it dry. And this stuff burns really well. And it's free. You already paid for it. It comes out of your dryer and you're just throwing it out anyway. Uh, you can put, I used to keep some in a Ziploc bag and just use a little bit at a time with some kindling. <sighs> All right, number nine, sun protection. And that doesn't miss me in like sunblock. Think about like a hat or sunglasses, long sleeve shirts, even in the summertime down south. It, Walking on asphalt, walking in that urban jungle, it's going to be hot. So think about ways to protect yourself. Even in the wintertime, sunglasses, if you're up north in one of those uh, god-awful places where it's covered in snow. I lived in Alaska and upstate New York, and it gets a lot of snow. And when the sun's out, uh, it can blind you. All right, so definitely something to protect your eyes, keep the sun off your neck, something like that. And then the last thing for those 10 essentials, a map and compass. I know we have GPS's, um, but batteries die, networks go down. A map and compass, or, and people don't think about this very often, before map and compasses, we had atlases. Those big road atlases that most of our parents had. I have one in my truck. It covers the 50 states and shows the major roads and a lot of the minor ones. Um, it's good to have. Those are huge. I'm sure you can get pocket versions. Um, if nothing else, tear out the page you need. Stuff it in your bag. Um, it's better to have just that one page and nothing at all. Okay? And then know how to use it. Know how to use a map and a compass. It's not hard. I think maybe one day I might try and do a, a class on that. But that's navigation. Using map and compass is a perishable skill. So that's something you probably have to do a lot in person versus just watching somebody. All right. So some other things to uh, get you home. A firearm. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, you know, a rifle or anything. For a get-home bag, just a simple pistol, something you can conceal. All right, it's been cleared. Uh, this is what I keep in my truck. Uh, if you have a holster for it and a way to carry it, two to three magazines, and then an extra box of ammo in your bag won't hurt anything. Um, three magazines, depending on the capacity, could put you anywhere between 20 and 45 rounds. Okay. Um, this one holds 10 plus 1, so I can get 31 rounds with three magazines of ammo. Um, a way to carry it, a holster, in the waistband holster, outside the waistband, a big jacket over it. Um, I have a fanny pack. 
I can throw that over a shoulder, um, have it at the ready, and it doesn't stand out as a threat as much. I can throw it across my chest. A few ladies out there, you have purses. If you, can, if you don't put your purse in your, your go bag, have a way to keep it in your purse where it's not going to get tangled up in the 10 tons of crap you ladies sometimes carry in your purses. All right, that's not me, me being sexist. That's just, it's just a fact sometimes, okay? All right. Other items I recommend as a necessity. Um, some paracord. All right. Doesn't have to be 50 feet, 10, 20 feet. Keeping your bag somewhere. Doesn't take up a lot of room. Over-the-counter painkillers. Advil, Tylenol, something like that. If you roll your ankle, um, have a headache. I don't know. Get a heat cramp. You can drink water. Take that and help out. Wet wipes. All right. Clean your hands. If you have to go to the bathroom while you're walking, you have some way to do that. Uh, or napkins or toilet paper. I prefer wet wipes because if they get wet, they still work. If you don't have that, I mean, I know at least most people I know, you go to a restaurant or fast food drive through they give you a stack of napkins. What do you do with them? You throw them in the glove box. Steal some of those, put them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in your, uh, your bag. Okay. Uh, something else. Um, I had some around here somewhere. Okay. Cash. $50 to $100. Keep a little Ziploc bag, a hideaway pocket in there. Um, don't throw a $100 bill in there, roll around like you're going to Vegas, okay? What I do is if I go and pay something, have a little extra change left over, I throw it in my, uh, my ashtray or whatever it's called now. And once I get a stack, I clip it together and put it in that bag. You know, it'll add up or any money you find in the dryer, put it on a money clip and throw it in there and you'll have it in case you need to barter it. Barter, buy some water, buy some energy drinks, buy food, okay? Um, not to get you home. Something else, not necessarily a necessity, but it's kind of a cool thing. It's called a Silcock key. <laughs> um, my dad gave this to me a couple years ago for Christmas. He's going to be happy. Cause, uh, but what this is, is a lot of businesses that have outside hoses. So they don't want people stealing the water. They have a, a chuck key to turn their water faucet on or their hose on outside. This has four different sizes. So if you're walking around after hours and you need water and there's nowhere to get it, but they have a hose, you can use this to unlock it and get you some water in a pinch. Okay, I would run the water, see if it's potable, hopefully, before you start drinking straight out of it because you don't know how old that water has been sitting there. Uh, something nice to have. These aren't very expensive. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, so something else to think about. Different times of year are going to dictate some of your loadout for your go-home bag. Uh, the winter time, obviously, a light blanket or um, what they call a space blanket, one of those aluminum heat blankets. They're pretty small to have in your bag. Uh, poncho liner or light blanket. I like poncho liners a lot, but compressed down, they compress down really small, but it really depends on your bag and your bag size. The weather and, you know, you're not going to carry a, a blanket around in the winter time or in the summertime when it's 100 degrees. 90 degrees at night when maybe that poncho that you brought was probably wet weather gear. You can wrap up on that. Holds the heat in pretty well. And then trash bags, Ziploc bags to put your stuff in. I got a trash bag. I keep my extra batteries, uh, my money in, some pens and pencils, stuff like that. Just keeps it together so you don't have a bunch of clutter at the bottom. And then last thing, pens or pencils and a notepad. I like writing in the rain because it gets wet and you can still write on it. So if you have to leave a note for somebody, um, something like that. Or if your phone dies, you can't take notes on that. You have something to write down or leave a note for somebody. If you're supposed to meet someone somewhere and you have to leave for whatever reason, you can leave them a note. Okay. Um, and that should be it. Um, it's my first one. So like, and subscribe. Let me know questions, comments, bitches, gripes, complaints. Um, and I look forward to hearing, subscribe, like it, please. Um, I'll hope to do more of these and maybe get better at it. Maybe using my hands less, maybe cursing less. All right, well, have a good night. Grizzle Grunt, talk to you later.